Hey, you guys. How you guys doing? The light is looking real good. Now, disclaimer. Um, I've had a little bit of an edible, just a little bit, you guys. It's just Delta 8. Those of you who don't know, in Texas, Delta 8 and Delta 9 are legal here. If you don't know what that is, look it up because I'm a little, I ain't going to be able to tell you right now. But basically, it's not full on cannabis. It does have some common effects and it's something that my husband and I do every now and then. Baby, like it's really, y'all, there's benefits to it. Like my husband doesn't need to, he doesn't need to take certain medication when he's on it. Um, it helps my father with his back pain. So anyway, I'm just giving you a disclaimer just in case I seem a little loopy because I am. So it's <laughs> time for another chit chat. Y'all know how we do this. We talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube and what I'm watching on TV. So you guys, my hair, <laughs> um, hmm. I'm going to, I have somewhere to go tomorrow. I'm going to go get my mammograms, going to go get my titties all pressed up. And Vivian, I'm going to go get a mammogram, okay? And so I want to look decent. I washed my hair yesterday. And so all I'm going to do today is just to hydrate my hair or moisturize my hair. I have the Giovanni Direct Leave-In Weightless Moisture. I'm using this bad boy. And I'm going to spray my hair with the Afogee's Keratin and Green Tea Reconstructor. And of course, seal it in with some hair oil. So how y'all doing? Girl, this bipolar ass Texas weather. And look, it's been kind of raining off and on in North Texas. So today, I was supposed to have, go back up to the DPS um, because I left my social security card up there. And she's like, if you don't come get it this week, I'm going to send it back to I said, no, you're not. I'm going to come get it this week. So I had planned on going down there today, but I don't, look, I know how to drive in the rain, but Dallas people, I ain't got time for y'all. So, and it's not even like rainy. It's just that the roads are slick. Or, am I saying it right? The roads are wet. So, there's already like uh, the 80s all backed up and all that. So I'm like, yeah, we ain't going to try that today. So I'll just go tomorrow after my appointment. So yeah, I'm just unraveling these large twists. Look at my hair. Um, I'm getting a lot more gray hair. I mean, it's about that age, right? I'm getting a lot more gray hair. And I'm also noticing that with my gray hair, it's a different texture. And so I kind of figure that. Um, cause all gray hair is, it's just a loss of melanin, right? Um, and so it's so beautiful at some, some of it, like there was a strain, strain in front of my, in the front of my head in which I looked at the bottom was turn, it's turning gray. I looked at the bottom and it was like a copper blonde like color because it's, it's turning gray. I went ahead and plucked it out. <laughs> all right y'all anyway so what's going on in my personal life besides driving around dallas getting stuff done still um it is two weeks before christmas we decided that we're gonna spend time at the anatole hotel we like the anatole you guys it, it has a the anatole was one of the first places that my husband took me to when we were um we were just dating um, and I fell in love. It was just, it was, it still is at night. It can be such a romantic, uh, a romantic place. And God, this was like, I think he took me there about, it's been a while, it's 17 years ago. He took me to the Anatoly. We walked the grounds at night and it, it just has such, you know, history. And so when we were there, of course, we were struggling college students. I was like, oh. You have to have so much money to stay here. But girl, due to the economy and everything else, we can now be able to afford to stay there. So my point is, we're going to be having um, time at the Anatole the week before Christmas. And JB loves the Anatole. He's he's so spoiled. He has stayed there several times, actually. Even before COVID, he was, we were taking him there. Um. So yeah, we're getting really excited. But girl, I got a few things left to get. For Christmas, including my husband, his gift, and I give myself something. You do anyone else do that? I get me several things actually for Christmas. So 
I buy myself, uh, I either do, well, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> I'm getting myself a new purse. I don't even, I do not need to hear my, my husband's mouth. I'm getting myself a new purse and some new boots. I'm getting myself some bah boots. Yeah, they're going to be cute, cute girl. Um, um, and that's it for me. That's it. But I got a couple of other things. But anyway, what's my point? Girl, Amazon, I have been trying since 10 o'clock this morning. As soon as I go to my checkout, it says, um, try again. We're overwhelmed because there's too many of our asses on our site. Basically, that's what it's saying. I'm not able to check out because their site is overwhelmed with a lot of people. It's too much traffic. So, you know what? Y'all should have got all y'all stuff a couple of weeks ago like me. All I'm doing, I, I'm just getting JB two more things. Everything else is household stuff. Like, so I'm pretty sure that people at Amazon are working on it. So I'll probably try again either early in the morning or later on this week because it's still, we got time. It's what? It's only the seventh. Hopefully we get, we got time. Um, what else is going on? Y'all, speaking of presents, <laughs> I've already started wrapping Jamie's presents, but I noticed that some of the wrapping paper was missing, right? And I'm like, where the hell did all the wrapping paper go? It, my baby's so honest. He hasn't learned how to lie yet. So he's like, oh, I, I wrapped up some presents and I'm practicing. <laughs> Child, my baby unwrapped up some presents and he's practicing unwrapping for Christmas. I was like, oh, so sweet um this is jb's you know his his we didn't have really big christmas last year because we were living in an apartment those of you who don't know we moved into an, an apartment temporary as we were selling our house in phoenix and so we didn't have a christmas tree up or anything but we I mean he got presents and all that but most of our money was going towards coming here so we're doing it up this year, which is why we're doing the Anatole and we're going out to eat and we're doing like the big Wonderland Christmas theme. We're doing pancakes with Santa, even though he don't believe in Santa. <laughs> we're doing pancakes with Santa and all of that, even though he doesn't believe in Santa. Um, but we just want it to be, you know, and he, my husband was telling me this morning, he's like, he is so spoiled. I said, I know he is. He, we, we know he's spoiled. Um, speaking of still being spoiled, his birthday is... Uh, the second week of January. So my parents are going to come down. I'm trying to convince my sister to come down because we want to have a good time. He's turning the big 10 one zero. My baby's getting to the double digits. Oh y'all time goes by so fast. And so since he's turning 10, we're going to spend time with my family. Um, I really want my sister here because she has kids. JB's age and so if she comes we plan on just staying at home and cooking and having a good time um my husband said that we can you know buy some air mattresses for all the kids to just sleep it'll be so much fun you guys um <laughs> sorry but if my parents just come then we'll go out to eat yeah so we'll see we'll see we'll see so all right you guys what i'm watching on youtube so kind of what i'm watching and i'm going to talk about a little bit of some of the crime that has been going on y'all it is it is absolutely crazy i knew that well we all know that crime increases when stuff in the world just just there's this uncertainty and then there's fear and then the, when the economy is not going well People start killing for money, but I just feel like there's a lot of domestic violence and I feel like there's no end to it. I was looking at um, Leia Gardon. She was she had posted something about a mother who was killed by her boyfriend. And then uh, a singer, single mom, this is a trigger, a woman shared, oh God, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get emotional because I think it's so sad. A woman and a wife group I'm in share where um, a single mom of two committed suicide because it's just too, it was too much. It's too overwhelming. She found it too overwhelming to be a single mom. And let me tell you something. I was a single mom for a hot minute. My um, uh, At the time, we decided to take a break. <laughs> Child. He thought it was a break. He said it was a break. Excuse me. I I broke up. I'm like I'm done. This is this is it. 
Um, and JB and I were in an apartment for a good five, I think it was like half a year basically. When I tell you that was the hardest shit, excuse my language, being a single mom, that time period, and it wasn't even about the money because at least I, I, ha I have a job and he was giving me money. That wasn't even it. It was just the stress of being the only one. And JB at the time, he was, I think he was like three years old. He was a toddler. I couldn't imagine doing that with, with multiple small children. And so this poor mom, we're not supposed to do things by ourselves, you guys. You know, they say, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. That's when you are married. It still takes a village. So let alone if you're by yourself and you don't have that support, I feel so bad for that young mom mother. I don't know her name or where she was at because I just, it, yeah. So along that, we all have now have heard about the young um, seven-year-old here in Paradise, Texas, which is about 40 minutes away from Fort Worth. And so, of course, because I'm in a lot of Texas groups and I'm in the DFW area, we got all the notification that this poor, you know, seven-year-old was missing. And you automatically think, hold on, y'all, I got to put the conditioner. You automatically think, okay, what the heck, what did the family do? Um, and then reading that she was, I guess she was with the stepmother. And so, I mean, I hate that that's the first thing you think of, but... You're thinking, you know, oh my God, what what did the stepmother do? And, that, and then I was in another group and they were literally like sharing information up to date. I mean, these people were investigating all types of stuff. They had pictures of what the house looked like. I guess it was a mobile home area. I mean, it was a lot of information. So I had to get off of that. But as we know by now, the poor girl was murdered by a FedEx driver. He was a contract worker for FedEx. Um, and this is the thing, you guys, places like FedEx and Amazon and stuff like that, they, a lot of them do hire contract drivers. And sometimes they be in unmarked vehicles. They don't necessarily be in a FedEx or UPS um, truck. You know what I mean? So some more information has been released. According to the FedEx driver, he had accidentally hit the seven-year-old with his truck. She was still alive and well, but she was going to tell her father that made him afraid. So he brought the child into his FedEx truck and then strangled her. Now, you cannot convince me otherwise that he didn't do anything else to this poor child. Another thing that's a little fishy to me is that the stepmother didn't notice that she was missing for a good two hours. So they're still getting information out to the public, but I think this situation is just sad all the way around. But this individual had to go through a background check to work for FedEx. From what I understand, I heard, you know, through the grapevine, I mean, this is not, this is just supposedly, I don't, because I don't want to get in trouble for slander or anything, but supposedly there was a woman a couple of years ago that said he had raped her and no one believed her. I think this was like six or seven years ago. But this poor baby, seven years old, I mean... If you can't walk, I think she was just going to her side of her house and a freaking FedEx driver. You, I would have never guessed that in a million years that that could happen to a child just at home, basically. Absolutely horrible for that family. I think um, from what I understand that the mother had posted somewhere on Facebook that they felt her. Meaning the mother basically posted that they felt that baby. I just absolutely horrible. This is why I tend to be a helicopter mom. Um, granted, you know, JB is a big kid, but you never know. There's still human trafficking going around. So I always tell JB to be cautious of his surroundings. Um, I don't necessarily let him. He's not outside by himself. When he was going to this public school, no way in hell I will let him walk to school by himself. Um, and I see little kids doing that. I see little girls doing it. I mean, this school only goes up to fourth grade, this elementary school. And some of these parents are okay. And I get it. Sometimes they may not have a choice, you know, but there's no way. You just never know. Um, and since we're so close to the school, they don't do buses. The buses don't, yeah.
or are you too close for the bus? Um, but no, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I don't even feel comfortable letting JB play outside unless I'm out there. I remember a couple of years ago, um, it was in, it was in Phoenix where a mom had let her child play in the front, um, in the front yard and she went back outside and the child was gone. Um, and during this time, they didn't have the Amber Alert. They didn't have that and that child has never been seen again. Yeah, I mean, I know they say you can't, you know, you can't always protect your children and that's, that's just so, so, so very sad um, that things like that happen. I, I, to not know, I will say at least they found that child because I think I would just be beside myself if my child was missing and I never knew what happened to them. You know what I mean? You just never knew what happened to them. Um, anyway, you guys, on to some other stuff. Um, child, what else am I watching on YouTube? I don't know why, but when I get obsessed with something, if I want to rewatch something i just can't stop watching it so a couple of days ago i started watching old clips of bridezilla you guys i used to watch <laughs> me and my friends i know some of y'all did too i used to watch all of those bridezilla shows it was absolutely crazy the one that really tripped me out was the um uh, the bridezilla it was a couple of them but i'm gonna tell y'all about the ones that i really remember Marsha and Archie. Marsha, <laughs> Marsha was just snapping on her fiance at the time named Archie. And I think there was a time where she was yelling at him and she's like, he, he's like, so you ain't gonna marry me? She said, no, no, I'm not gonna marry you. So he's in his car crying. The door, you know, the window's up and her friend or somebody, family member walks by and she's like, who's that? And this is, um, the fiance, she's outside, the, the woman. She's like, it's Archie. He, she's, she's like, what's wrong with She said, he's crying. And so Archie's in the car crying. She says, she's not gonna marry, marry me. I'm like, if you don't get your big ass up and, and leave that woman, they, they're divorced now. From what I understand, she ended up cheating on her. So there was that one. And then what's another one? The Portia. <laughs> Portia, who was also on, she was on Divorce Court. Portia, I don't remember, I don't remember the name of her. Byron, that was his name, Byron. Child, Portia called Byron's ex and was like, uh, completely cursed her out in a country ass Southern ghetto way. But I love Portia. She seemed, she seemed like someone who was really fun to be around. You know what, you know what I mean? Like that fun home girl that always had have your back. So yeah, child was watching a couple of episodes of Bridezilla. That turned into watching a couple of episodes of Gypsies, my big fat gypsy wedding, y'all. That culture is so <laughs> so it's interesting. And a part of me feels like they will always be stuck in that type of mindset because that's just how they are. I don't know if this one mom did this for the show or if she really feels this way. For her teen teen year old. The, this is the mom who's gypsy and she married to a, I believe they call, if you're not a gypsy, they call you a gorge, gorgy or gorgia. I don't know. They have a certain word for you. If, it begins with a G if you're not a gypsy, basically. So she married outside of the gypsy traditional, he's not a gypsy, basically, which is kind of frowned, frowned down upon. She's having this birthday party for her 10 year old daughter, her 10 year old daughter, right? And she is inviting potential husbands, potential husbands, like these are little boys. And the girls typically, this is just a horrible cycle that continues in their culture. The young girls typically get married off by the time they're 16 years old. Some of them get married to their cousins, either second cousins, sometimes first cousins. It looks like um, alcohol and meth is, because a lot of them have really bad teeth. Whew, child, Lord have mercy. I, I just, I get fascinated by it because it's like a train wreck. You just can't stop watching the bullshit. You know what I mean? So um, the wedding dresses are horrible. 
horrible. I just can't stop looking at it, y'all. I really can't. So, girl, looking at all that madness. Um, woke up the other day to the news that Christy Alley had passed away. You guys, I didn't even know she was sick. And I'm pretty sure it, it wasn't something that was well known because she was recently diagnosed with colon cancer, from what I understand. Um, Chrissy Alley had such a quirky sense of humor. Of course, I loved her in Look Who's Talking. That's all I really knew her about because Cheers, even though I was born doing Cheers, it was really not, yeah, that's not something I would be interested in watching, honestly. Um, oh, my, my parents never watched something like that, Cheers. But she was such... She just has such a quirky personality. I remember when she was on the Oprah Winfrey show because she had battled with, you know, her weight. And she came, remember y'all, she came out in that two-piece and she had that little wrap around the waist and she did like little shimmy shimmy. I was like, look at Christy Alley. Just just absolutely love her personality. Um, and so just to hear that she, she passed away was really sad. I didn't know she was that old, 71. She looked really good for her age. I saw some clips of her. I'm pretty sure she, you know, as she was dealing with cancer, she possibly didn't look the same. But my point is, is that I saw video footage of her within the past two years or so. And she looked very well. So that's, that's very sad. Really, really sad. We're losing a lot of people. Um, speaking of, I reached out to some people who I work with that I um, know that have lost a parent. It's so hard. I just could not imagine my coworker. She lost her mom earlier this year and I reached out to her and I'm like, you know what? My heart is with you. I know I haven't gone through it because both I have both of my parents are still alive. Glory to God. Amen for that. Right. But I just cannot imagine going through the holidays for the first time. This is the first year that you won't have your sweet mother or your father or your sister or your husband or whoever, you know, a friend. Just to lose a loved one and ha not to have that. It's almost like an empty emptiness, a part of you. So I reached out to her. Please make sure y'all reach out to people who are, you know, by themselves to you guys. Please do that. Um, that's basically it, what I'm watching on YouTube. What I'm watching on TV and Netflix, Hulu, um, girl, Blood and Water is back. If you haven't watched it, please check it out. It's a great little South African gem. They are on the third season. It's almost like teenage drama. Cause are they in high school? Yeah, yeah. They're in high school. Cause it's, but it's a private school, but I like it, like it, like it. It's called blood, blood and water, girl. The edible, the edible. Um, I am trying to watch Wednesday, you guys, and this is has to do with Wednesday from the Adams family. I started to watch the first episode, and it's it's giving me goth Harry Potter. There can only be one Harry Potter. I, I just, that's what it's giving me. I can't, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. But right now, I can't do it. I really can't. I can't do it right now. So, no to that. I started back watching Bloodline with Sissy Spacek and her turned up nose. <laughs> um, A movie that I saw on Netflix that was really good is called Anion. A-N-I-O-N, Anion or Anon, don't quote me on the name, name but it's spelled A-N-I-O-N. I like the sci-fi futuristic movies, and in this particular movie, you have a POV, which is a point of view. Your eyes allow you to see everything about anyone, so if you are a detective, and let's say the detective is walking towards me, he can see my age, my um, where I work at, basically everything about me comes up as a file. Um, and then if something were to happen, you can enter that person's point of view and backtrack what's going on. So there's a couple of killings that are going on in the movie and they're trying to figure out who the killer is. It has Clive Owen. I'm popping because Clive Owen is sexy to me, you guys. There is something about 
Clive Owen is not necessarily extremely good looking, but he has swagger about him that makes him that that puts him up there to where he's fine. He's fine to me, and he's fifty one. Hell yeah, you got gray somewhere. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, Clive Owen, I like Clive Owen. Um, I starting to rewatch Chocolate. I love this movie, you guys, with Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is one of the few people. Typically, certain men in Hollywood can age well. Johnny Depp is not aging well. Johnny Depp. I saw an interview of him on the Oprah show, and he was in his 40s. He was good, good looking still in his 40s. He was still good looking in his early 50s, but now, due to the heavy alcohol, alcohol, excuse me, and life in general, I think he's had some work done on his face, but no, he's not. But Chocolate, I'm watching anyway. I like the movie. Another series I finished, and I'm gonna be very honest, I'm not gonna give everything away just in case you want to watch it it is dead to me with christina alpagate i absolutely love christina alpagate you guys she's one of my favorite actresses i love this series and i believe this was season three it is ending i'm gonna say something i did not like the way the series ended i felt like it was part of it was rushed um and i will say i i understand why christina alpagate unfortunately was diagnosed with ms um, I believe this year, which is really sad. She can't even walk. So the fact that she was able to um, tape this last season with this, and I noticed that in the series, they had her to be pregnant. So she'd be sitting down a lot of, a lot of the time and taking her time because I just couldn't imagine. She's, she's fatigued. She can barely walk. She's probably, you know, just not 100%. So kudos to her. For, for still pushing through and finishing the series. So I can see why it felt kind of rushed, but I just just didn't like the storyline towards the end. Um, but things, things happen. I think it's still a good series, so. Another one that came out on Netflix so that's very different, but I'm feeling um, 1899. It has that sci-fi feel. It's from the producers actually of Dark, and it stars the main actor from um, Rain. Have you seen Rain? And Jonas is in it from Dark Middle Jonas. Fine ass Middle Jonas. Let me tell you something. If you've ever seen Dark, <laughs> y'all, the actor that played in Dark. Okay, so let me, let me, let me backtrack. Dark is one of those futuristic series that goes into three different time periods and it has to deal with time travel and different dimensions and stuff like well not necessarily different dimensions to a certain degree but time traveling and so there's a character on the show called Jonas and so with every character you have three different characters you have young Jonas middle Jonas and old ass Jonas okay there was an episode where Jonas middle Jonas was taking off his shirt <sighs> And he was getting dressed and you could see, you know, on the man, the body, the hip section, he's, he's lean. He's very lean and he's cut. And this man is 52 years old. Child, when I tell you, I'm, I'm not, look, I fast forwarded that scene like at least two or three times. I was like, this man is fine as hell. So anyway, middle, I say all that to say. Girl, get with it. Middle Jonas is in the series called 1899. This is another one of those that's a little tricky. There were some parts of it that was slow and I was like, oh, this seems weird as hell, but hear me out. Stay with it. If you can get past episode three or four, stick with it. It's good. The last episode had me like on the edge of my... I thought I knew what was going to happen, but that last episode, I'm like, oh, season two is going to be very interesting. So that is it, you guys. I got to finish, you know, my, my nose is itchy because it's raining outside. It's probably my allergies being flared up. Um, That is it. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I will be coming back in a couple more days with some more hair-related videos. All right, you guys, take care. Bye.